So our focus here is culture and a systemic perspective of culture. And meeting you, Bent, thinking about culture. I'm interested to hear what do you now understand as the meaning of culture at this moment in your career? <clears throat> My main perspective is how to get organizations to develop a better culture and to go beyond individual training and individual consulting but developing culture so that everybody has a better chance to do his or her best. And so I have a, a very simplified definition, description of culture. Culture is the way to get the best of everybody in the front and the rest more in the back and to tie these best parts of each other in, into each other to, together so that we constantly invite each other into our best parts. And if you do this, you have much more chances to change culture of systems compared with everybody is trained individually and hopes somehow to bring this development into the system. So what I notice in what you say is you said the definition of culture, no, a description of culture. Do you have a definition of yes. culture? What's the definition? A definition is the amount of conscious and unconscious uh, ways to contribute to reality. Okay. So that's your working definition now? Yes. So go right back in your life, mm -hmm. maybe back into very early life. When did you first become aware of this thing called culture? How old were you? Uh, what comes to my mind uh, are situations in Yugoslavia when I've been about eight. Uh -huh. And I loved the different atmosphere from Dubrovnik. Uh -huh. It's a famous city man, many may know. So you visited? Yes, yes. We, we, uh, I've been in holidays there very often, uh -huh. but this might be one of the first ones it was so different that we had to sleep almost through the day because it was too hot to do something else. I didn't know that in before. I also remember that I had uh, a hassle with some of the boys in the streets. I don't know why, but I, I didn't feel I did, did not know how to relate to them. I did make something wrong and did not know how to make it right. <laughs> And, and, and then I escaped not to get hit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of my first experience abroad was seven years old. Mm -hmm. We went to France for the day and my mother wanted a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And the whole day was spent searching for a cup of tea <laughs> in France. It was impossible. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so there's, oh, it's very different here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So there was that first early experience. And what did you do with that impact? I forgot it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a kind of person who does not uh, like to keep mentally things present. I do not know how to deal with them. And I did not know, so I put them away and maybe until no, three or four times in my life I might have remembered it and, uh -huh. and now. Uh -huh. And I, I wonder about professionally, how did you get interested in culture? Oh, I got interested in culture uh, meeting school and cultures for Gestalt school, TA schools, the systemic schools, the body therapists, the esoteric schools. And 
I was astonished how many ritualistic habitual patterns they develop and they live in without any reasoning that's, that's only one way to do it. Yeah. They have to just lived in it. And I'm a person uh, that always is with one part of my attention outside and looking at how we are dealing with reality. And so very often I tried uh, to say, ish, yeah, for example, ego stage. It's a question, where would you put intuition into the ego state model? That's a total question from within. So uh, I've dealt with many of these professional cultures or school cultures uh, from the position if yeah, you can state it that way, but it's not the only way. Don't look from within, look from outside. First, ask yourself, what is my question about intuition about? Uh -huh. And then you can think whether GA can say something to it, or if the ego state model might fit to give a meaningful answer or not. But do not fall into the Brunnen. What is it? Uh -huh. What's the Brunnen? Pool. Don't fall into the yeah, pool. don't fall into the pool. Always, at the same time, stay outside and see there is a pool. So I'm curious here, thinking about that eight-year-old boy in Dubrovnik, yeah, where he, it was, from the outside, it was impossible to deal with the inside. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, as a consultant or as a person on the outside, feeding this information to the people on the inside, how are you received? By people I talk to? Or By the people on the inside of the culture. Oh, yeah. Um, that depends on the culture I'm in. Mm -hmm. If this is a culture who loves to be inside and feels disturbed mm -hmm. by being, uh, by observations from outside mm -hmm. and feels irritated by not being on a way of truth, since they sometimes feel uncomfortable and um, repelling mm. my contribution. Just like those boys in Dubrovnik. Yeah, uh, and when this is too much, I just leave these scenes because uh, I do not want to spend my time with that. So I develop my own school or my own training institute, my own concepts that include all these perspectives. And we've seen uh, this culture that is growing up to now 4,000 uh, trainees we already had. Uh, people love it, this perspective. Uh -huh. So when I was in psychotherapy, I often was, uh, I felt pathologized because I'm uh, I'm not too much in it, mm -hmm. but may maybe this is a, a one-sided development of my personality, but I made something good out of it, so I hope to contribute with that. Okay, but I guess I want to pursue this point of the organizational consultant, the systemic consultant, is on the outside of a culture, just like the boy in Dubrovnik was on the outside of the culture. And when we comment from the outside about the culture, repulsion seems to be, for many people, a very common experience. So we can grow our own cultures, we can develop our own oasis, but is it, you know, what's your experience as an external consultant commenting on a culture that you are not part of, an organizational culture, for example? Uh, I, I do not share the, maybe all the premises of this picture, mm -hmm. because it's not a major intervention of commenting mm -hmm. we do. OK, well, making an intervention in some way. Yeah, but the intervention we usually make is inviting people into getting a taste of a, of a different cultural experience and then compare themselves. Mm -hmm. So we do not teach people to comment culture. Okay, I was thinking about 
acting as a consultant to organizations. That's true also. Yeah, so you would invite people out of the organization to a different culture. Yes, for example, if, if they think their problem is a leadership problem, mm -hmm. and they have ideas that through training through all the hierarchical level it should be solved, uh, we do not say, what, what culture is this that you think this way? Uh -huh. We say, okay, this is one thing you could do. In, from our perspective, it has, it has these and these consequences. Uh, I want, we want to offer you a different model, how you could look at the question you have and think about the measures you could take. Uh -huh. And then we describe it to you, and if it's interesting for you enough, we do an example, for example, in a fishbowl, uh -huh. and then you can sense it, think about, and discuss it, whether you think this could be something you could need and try beside your tradition you have. Uh -huh. so that's a, a common intervention. Okay, so this is an important point, isn't it? Is about how to intervene. Yes. So you're saying what you do is give a taste of something different, right. an offer of something different. Right. Rather than... It's not making, analyzing. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds... Um, a significant way of thinking about mm -hmm. interventions with cultures. And what, in your experience, is the outcome? That's, uh, that's different. Uh, uh, what we... This has to do with the selection uh, of... Uh, um, if we invite people into a culture of... of um, of encounter between uh -huh. our institute, for example, and there, and we are successful. And usually, people come to us having an idea that it would be useful. Okay. So we 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 never have uh, the situations that we have to convince somebody uh -huh. uh, who feels disturbed by what we think and do. The usual situation is that people have the idea they could get something from us, and they want to tell us how their reality is, and invite how we should approach, we would approach the same reality. Uh -huh. And so usually it's a very cooperative encounter culture on a meta level, because we meet to compare realities. We meet to, uh, to, to make experiments how it could be different. So the way you describe that, it sounds as if it's about individuals from the culture that come to the experiment? Uh, yes, they are always humans, but they, are, they do not come as um, private persons. They come in their sure, organizational role. Yes. yes. And are you, do you take care to recruit from a certain level of an organization? No. This, we, we, are, we are very seldom working in the one-to-one -one setting. For example... But it sounds like individuals come out to your... No, no. no. For example, like, I, I do not do many organizational consulting now, but my teachers do, and I uh, tell you an example of how they do it when they do real organizational consulting. For example, if there, a company calls and say, we need to have a leadership program because somehow people don't do what we think they should do. Uh -huh. Um, then uh, he's the head of a, of a consulting company. He says, okay, uh, whatever the problem is you want to solve, please choose the three, four, five important people within your organization who should deal with that. Okay. And then you four or five can come for three hours to us for free. And you don't, you don't are specifically for a specific service. You just tell us what your problem is and how you think you should solve it. Mm -hmm. And I take two or three of my people and listen to you and then I say how I would think about your situation and what kind of services I would offer to you. So okay. it's not much one-to-one. -one. So they no, but they're choosing four or five individuals yes. who they identify as having leverage in the system. In some way. Yeah. 
I, I don't know why you are emphasizing the word individual. Certainly, uh, our understanding of system is system of people, yeah. always. Yeah. But people in their roles yeah. within the organization and through the connections of roles, they are a system. Okay, the reason I'm emphasizing or I'm asking you about individuals is an organization may have several thousand people yes. in the organization. So I'm trying to get a sense of how the culture of the whole organization might be impacted by five people. Yeah. Okay, now I understand what you're heading for. Uh, we call our approach an experimental approach. So we never accept to make an analysis of a whole culture uh -huh. because that's just too complicated. Uh -huh. We always approach the cultures, the conscious and unconscious functioning of people creating a reality directed to a focus, to, uh -huh. a, to a issues they bring in. Yeah. So it's not, not culture as such. Uh -huh. It's always culture, how to deal with questions. Yeah. So the culture and, is the context. And how performance. Yeah. And then certainly if you have uh, the leadership team, you have a different perspective or a different level of culture as if you have others. Uh -huh. And in the first step we work with Sam to help to develop some uh, new elements of culture we find meaningful and they find meaningful. And then thinking with them together about where, where they want to spread that in their organization and who should do that, by what means and what they need from us to help them to do so. So, so it's, it's a very, always a pragmatic uh, dealing with culture. It's, we, are not, we do not analyze culture or have a concept for culture as such. Mm -hmm. It's always, there are always working perspectives while a professional tries to do a work. So if I asked you to conclude whether you perceive there being such a thing as the German culture, so you're from Germany, how would you respond? This is also a, a very complex thing what German culture could be. Um, uh, I'm a, I learned to be proud to be a cultural German, not a natural, uh, not a national, national German. Uh -huh. And so some of the things those Germans I know and are in the perspective of my cultural view uh, usually have some benefits in really thinking things through. Uh, being clear about categories, thinking about uh, what the third step will be when I start the first step. And um, have l being able to learn very quickly how much resources you really have and how far you can get with these resources, not to start something very glorious and after half a year everything is rotten because you didn't think about how it will go on and this is for example how uh, how why we for example have the principle of crystallizations of our work we start always with a small example and think in advance by choosing this example it is one that could probably be expanded and could be uh, run by the resources of the system uh -huh. when we are gone. And then we slowly make up a small fire, a, a big Seeding fire, crystals. and teach them, yeah. teach them to, put, to have their own new fires and feed the fires so that they get, do not get dependent from us, uh -huh. but they can run their own business in a better cultural way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for the for, conversation. For your wonderful question. So I am going to pass to Sylvie.